Oh, I remember about the wagon, how we were in it, you know, how we slept in the back, and I crawled up into the little hole in the back part of it and fell out. I like to frighten my mother to death, but it didn't hurt me a bit. 89-year-old <laughs> Catherine Furry is a rare person, one of the few whose memory spans the transition from Conestogas to space capsules. And at the farm southwest of Olathe, where she lives with her brothers, Horace and Tommy, she is trying to help these students transition back. Their farm is, to these latter-day pioneers, what Westport Landing was to their forefathers. The beginning of their pilgrimage to the west. In station wagons, instead of covered wagons, they follow the trail through what is now downtown Gardner to a highway marker on the south side of town on one of the last highways they will travel for the next 30 days. It was at this point, now marked by a bovine skull about three-tenths of a mile northwest of that marker, where the trails divided. The Santa Fe going generally southwest and the Oregon going generally west. Instead of a skull in those days, there reportedly was a crudely lettered sign here that said simply, Road to Oregon. Such a simple sign, one writer observed, never announced such a long journey. Ironic that this little bit of trail at the start of that journey is one of the few remnants left to be seen. Maybe it's because so many more wagons started the journey then finished it. By coordinating a precise guidebook with county maps, the group is able to approximate the original trail on back roads. One student reads directions from the book, another reads the map, and sister Eleanor Craig drives. Oh, this is great. <laughs> oh, this is terrific. <laughs> a newly graded road. This time in Nebraska, there was a, a whole house coming down the road toward <laughs> us. <laughs> I know, that's the hard part. Don't you wish you could see it the way it was? Yeah. By noon, the little station wagon train has crossed the line into Douglas County, past Mount Blue, a signal point for the early wagon masters. And the students are initiated to the little problems they share with their forebearers. Pick up 59. Yeah. Pick a straight one. Yeah. Miss all of this stuff. It's the world's biggest irony. The pioneers go along and build the bridges, and then they have to come along in the damn thing. <laughs> were both a necessity and an obstacle to the immigrants, and the Caw River offered a special challenge. Countless would-be settlers lost their lives trying to ford its 230-yard current with wagons and teams. But for the rather exorbitant fee of a dollar, you could cross in relative safety here at the Pappen Brothers Ferry in Topeka. The Topeka Boulevard Bridge spans the river at Pappen's Ferry today. You can drive it in about 30 seconds. When the Burnett Company crossed here in 1843 with 120 wagons, it took five days. That is one of the first strong impressions you get retracing the emigrants' footsteps by car, the sheer eternity of the journey. It had taken those early Americans two weeks just to reach Topeka. Even by our securitist back road route, it had taken us only seven hours to reach the Red Vermilion Crossing 30 miles beyond. Here you can still see the pilings of the Oregon Trail Bridge built by Indian Chief Louis Vieux and his grave in an ancient cemetery nearby. Contrary to common belief, the Indians were more often friends than enemies of the immigrants, and those who didn't make it to Oregon more often died of cholera or simply succumbed to the ordeal. There are 30,000 graves along the Oregon Trail, evenly spaced, that would be one every 80 yards. Westmoreland, Kansas, 150 miles down trail. Local residents join our group for a sing-along on the very campsite used by the immigrants. And already, in the minds of the students, the melancholy transition to the past has begun. Wonderland shoots place to place, Westmoreland, Kansas.